on this week's NFES in reality check. We speak with the TM Forum on its Open API initiative and how it will be used to accelerate a recently announced MEF partnership. Thanks for joining us on this week's NFP SDN Reality Check. I'm your host, Dan Meyer, Editor-in-Chief at RCR Wireless News. And uh, this week, we are joined by Joanna O'Brien, who's the VP of APIs and Ecosystems at the TM Forum, talking a bit about uh, some new work that the company's been, or the organization's been doing in terms of uh, APIs. So, hey, Joanne, thanks for joining us. Uh, we always appreciate it. No problem. Good to talk to you again. Very good. Well, maybe a little bit of, I guess, uh, maybe background we should start with on the, on the open, open API framework. I think we've talked a bit about it in the past, but Maybe for those that are know, who don't know much about the platform, uh, what's I guess what was the initiative behind it for the TM Forum? What is the platform, uh, and kind of when was it rolled out? Kind of just some background on it, if you, if you could. Sure. Okay. A little bit of background. Um, so we started the initiative, the Open API framework, about three years ago. Um, we recognised essentially that we had a huge amounts of assets in the OSSJ and TOSI and NTNN interfaces, which are huge, widely deployed across telecommunications operators all over the globe. However, the world had shifted, right? The, these two-year release cycles were no longer what was needed in the future. We also recognized that, you know, with the move towards SOA-based architectures and the need to be able to um, externalize components and the need to be able to essentially, in the future, monetize those, those components through partnering in digital ecosystems, we needed a new way of working. We needed a new suite of APIs that manage the business operations capability of these uh, essential assets that would really allow, open up new business, uh, business models, business innovation for telco operators. And that was the very earliest kind of thought process behind it. I guess we've always had three key use cases in mind. There's the inside the business for the operator themselves, how to streamline their architecture, streamline their business, even when you're talking about a large global operator with many different business units in many different countries, they still have to manage those communications with all those different units. And uh, so that, that was kind of scenario one, inside the business, if you will. Then there was the operator to operator scenario would be scenario two that we continuously look at and revisit back. On sales scenario. And then the third scenario was really when, when an operator wishes to expose a capability in a, in a cross-ecosystem scenario. It could be you know, any types of internal service that they want to partner for new business opportunities. And that's been the, the, the real logic behind the Open API program since the very beginning. Um, I guess the big, the big business value, the big reason why, why we do this is it's all about interoperability at the end of the day. Um, you've got to be able to connect very quickly, automate your services, onboard partners, automate any kind of business opportunities. So interoperability and agility, I guess, are the critical strategic reasons why people get involved with the open API programs and use the APIs. Um, there's always you know, value with regards to savings on a per API basis, okay? But, you know, uh, you know, it's really when you start to use all the APIs together that the power really starts to come into play. Yeah, it's one of those things that really kind of builds a momentum. Uh, the more you use it, the deeper it goes into the organization. Obviously, the more benefit the company gets out of the process, it seems like it too. Absolutely. Like you, it is, it's tactical to use, you know, one or two APIs, but it's much more strategic to think of it as part of your overall architecture and strategy. Got it. And I guess what's been the initial reaction, I guess the uptake, have you seen uh, some pretty good uh, uh, reaction from the industry uh, for, for the platforms? Yeah, absolutely. Look, the, the APIs are, you know, they've been highly accredited for the design patterns, for the simplicity, for the, um, the adherence to the REST-based patterns. Um, so really, and the fact that they've been built using SID and ETOM as its historical basis, they're well formed, well thought through. Um, so the uptake, the, the interest in uptake is massive, right? So we're consistently obviously working with the telecommunications operators. That's who is, you know, that's historically who we're all about. Yeah. But as operators want to communicate with other industries and create new business opportunities for themselves, 
we also do a lot of exploratory projects with other with other industries for example i'm doing a um an exploratory project in the industry for that o space partnering with um a research institute in in the uk which represents you know 600 member companies in that space we're reusing these apis in multiple different scenarios you know from very narrow scope where you kind of reduce the downtime of robots um, from an activation configuration perspective to kind of zooming out completely to the logical factory creating the uh, the digital twin using the form open apis and platform-based thinking and architectures yeah Interesting. I, I'm going to guess too that I, I think working with the telecom space is probably going for the most difficult route to do that because it does seem like telecom operators, are, a lot of them are so entrenched with their current uh, operating systems and how they, how they do things that going the, down that road uh, is probably not the easiest road to go down. So obviously you guys have kind of tackled this, uh, perhaps going after the most difficult uh, model first and then anything else just be easy going down the road after that. Well, there, I guess there's different schools of thought, but <laughs> any of them who are, any, any of the operators who are uh, really designing their architectures using SOA based principles, that's a really good fit for uptake of the APIs. And you can, it's not something that's going to have, you know, 100% deployment in, 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 in any short period of time. It is a journey, you know, it is a two or three year journey to, to be able to design your architecture in this way and be able to expose these capabilities. And as you're making these changes and driven by business needs, then you incorporate the the APIs into the relevant projects. And that's really how it's happening. Makes sense. Now, now you guys recently kind of announced a deal, I think with uh, working with MEF uh, on some of these as well, kind of working towards the standardization of all this. Uh, can you talk a little bit about, I guess, what's part of that and kind of the benefit uh, of you guys working together towards this uh, common goal, what that's gonna do for the industry? Sure, so we see the the, the Open APIs in the TM Forum, they're, they're quite mature. They're, you know, as, as Open APIs, there are three years um, in place for the most part. However, a lot, there's a lot of history there beyond that. So they're well formed, well thought out, and there's a lot of confidence in, in the, the intelligence that's gone into that over the years. So that's a, that's a big factor. Mm -hmm. However, so the APIs have, have pros and cons to them, right? The pro is they're service agnostic. The con is they're service agnostic. Um, the, so that basically means that yes, they're the digital glue, if you will, for, for that can enable any types of service. However, when you get into specific services, there may need to be some form of extension. So we have a pretty significant project underway with MEF. We're looking at interoperability of Ethernet services. Mm -hmm. so we're working together on the data model and the APIs, taking the explicit APIs that have been created and are already in place and, and released from TM Forum and evaluating what changes need to be made in order to uh, cope with inter-operator uh, LSO Ethernet uh, capabilities. We're also running a, uh, the first release of that is, is expected in July. Okay. Um, so the, not only are they using Team Forum open APIs and we're working collaboratively to gather back any changes that we need, incorporate that into the core, but we're also working collaboratively on the data models. So with each API, we also have a data model. And in the same way that you would have an extension to an API for an Ethernet capability, you may also have an Ethernet extension to the data model. So it should get much more uniform and industrialized as we go through this process. So I guess, how's, how's the work been with MEF on this? Because I, I always find it interesting when uh, different organizations kind of do come together to work on things together, because it does seem like, today or the past couple of years, there's been so many new uh, organizations and different um, initiatives that have kind of come out towards streamlining the, the operations of telecom operators. Uh, and a lot of them seem to be almost working, not so much in silos, but you know, kind of doing their own little thing. Uh, so whenever I hear about organizations coming together to work together, uh, I think it's great just because it seems to kind of streamline the process, but I'm always kind of worried about how those organizations work together. I guess, what have you found so far in terms of working with MEF on this platform? It's great. Um, we're ultra collaborative. <laughs> and at the end of the day, we, when we're working on projects, we expect, you know, a lot of companies who are competing with each other to collaborate together for the better, you know, for the good of the entire industry. That's what this is about. All our members, we have a lot of common members, we have a lot of different members also. We're here to work together to enable the whole industry move forward. And because TM Forum is in the end-to-end -end management space of digital ecosystems, 
you know, we've recognized for a very long time that we have to collaborate with lots of different industries. So it's been a key part of how we operate for many years. Yeah, and this is, it seems like for the TM Forum too, that it's kind of a, maybe a little bit of branching out for you guys too, because you guys are kind of getting, uh, I mean, you guys have always had a pretty broad base of, of focus, but it seems like this, again, going towards the Ethernet thing, uh, side of things too, kind of broadens uh, what TM Forum has been doing. And it seems like it brings just more, more information to the, whole, to, the whole, to the whole picture, I guess. Well, I think it's, it's a realize, so with all of the assets and forum bells, we like to prove them out in real context with real services, because a lot of it is very abstract and very uh, service agnostic, like I say. So you have to prove them in real, in real scenarios and real situations. So MEF is one example of this. We also run a, a, not a huge number of catalysts. I think it's ter over 30 catalysts for this year's team forum live. A whole number of those are focused on NFV and STN and exposing capabilities, for example, like exposing ultra um, reliable and uh, low latency capabilities to enable something like connected cars. So you have to prove these out over and over and over um, to one as part of essentially as part of our R&D process and get, gather feedback and make changes into the, the, the core frameworks. But also it's part of the uh, learning for the companies because they bring that learning back into their organization. So it's part of the industry uptake scenario. Um, we're definitely industrializing the process with, with, with MEF, with our partners, MEF on this. Um, and it's working, it's working reason quite well. I mean, you will have um, discussion around um, what way something should be, right? Should it be, so should something be in, in the core of the API or should it be in the Ethernet extension? It's really important to us that the, the, because essentially it's a digital plug, you don't want to have heaps of extensions, right? And you lose the power over time if there's an awful lot of extensions to the APIs. So we do want to manage that. And, uh, but what we have found is that the same principles have, you know, in the people that we're working with, they have the same attitude and the same principles. We all want to work together as a single team to move this forward. And, you know, I'm very confident that the team will deliver on their first release in July. Very good. I, obviously, a lack of egos is key to all of this, too. Nobody's uh, thinking that they have all the answers. So, obviously, if you can work together, uh, that helps the whole process along, it sounds like, then for everybody involved. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. There's, nobody has all the answers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I'm guessing, too, that the, un, the interoperability part of all this seems – still a very key component because I think operators, a lot of telecom operators are looking to make, you know, this transition towards uh, greater software control of the networks and even on the Ethernet side of things. Um, but I'm guessing that th there's probably some concern because they keep seeing all these new initiatives that come out or these new advances in platforms that, you know, if they, if they jump into it now, are they going to pigeonhole themselves into a certain uh, way of doing things that down the road might not be supported? Uh, so I'm guessing being able to kind of provide that sort of uh, uh, runway for a carrier looking ahead, being able to say, hey, you know, we can go down this road today and know we're going to be supported, you know, if we have some stuff that's still kind of legacy type of systems. Uh, it, that seems like that's still a big part of all this move towards, towards kind of um, the softwareization of, of the telecom network out there. Absolutely. I mean, it's not, it's certainly nobody's really dealing with a greenfield scenario. Everyone is dealing with some form of hybrid, right? Um, and TM Forum, as part of our Zoom project, has done a lot of research on the hybrid network platform management capabilities. So a lot of that thinking is coming into to this work with, with, with MEF as well. Um, but ultimately, I mean, if you have, and we've had for a very long time, this future proofing, this providing agility into the business for the future, so that no matter what uh, business scenario that the product team dream up the the technology team needs to be able to rapidly respond to that that's been the the core of what we've been aiming at for a long time so that's that's at, at the center of it so absolutely i think this is not really a runway that could cause you to get some kind of a lock-in situation it's a runway that frees you up that creates opportunity that creates agility so it's it's the opposite of the way probably things were thought about a long time ago, 10 years ago or so. Yeah, it makes sense. Makes sense. And then again, so, so again, so, the, so in July, we should expect uh, the first, uh, I guess, uh, fruits of this, of this uh, working relationship to come out. And then what's, I guess, what's the plan then after that? What should we expect? I mean, is, will it be just the initial trials of this or what will be the plan? Continuous sprints. There'll be continuous sprints um, that will go on. And then, so the first sprint is, is from here to July. 
will be a similar sprint after that. Um, in parallel with that, we're also running a catalyst with MEF. Uh, it's called the MEF plat Partnering Platform. Mm -hmm. And again, powered by the Forum Open APIs, um, kind of separate to the, the, uh, the formal project, partnership project with MEF, but at the same time, a complementary uh, proving ground of, of the uh, LSO Sonata using Forum Open APIs in a real uh, partnering platform capability scenario. That will be demonstrated at TM Forum Live in Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Will that be shown off at the events? I know uh, in the past when I've attended that event, uh, the Catalyst programs are always, uh, at least from a reporter's point of view, always one of the more interesting things to see just because of the, the different companies involved in the collaborations. It's always interesting to see how they work together. Uh, so we'll be able to see this part as, as part of the Catalyst program then? Yeah, that, that will be one of the key uh, features of the project. We'll also be, um, we're also running a hackathon at the event. And for the first time, we will be looking to expose uh, network based capabilities and allow the hackers to kind of get creative and create new opportunities for, for telcos using uh, the network slices and powered again by Team Forum Open APIs. So, yeah, lots of different avenues. Um, and again, similarly, on the same kind of vein, there is a very new stream at the Team Forum Live event called uh, Digital Platforms and APIs. Mm -hmm. So, again, we'll be working through. Um, hearing about, from people from different industry verticals, but also many case points, case studies from operators around how they are designing platform-based architectures, how they're using the APIs. So, for example, Telefonica and BT, um, and many others will be will be. You can hear from those and what they're doing in the real life. Um, a, a keynote from another industry vertical would be GE. Mm -hmm. um, that'll be one of the kickoff case studies on the. On, on the first day of that of that session. Yeah, that's always interesting. You guys do bring in some really interesting kind of outside the telecom world uh, companies that speak there, which provide a nice perspective on how this all is playing out outside of our own little kind of, you know, what we focus on in terms of telecom. So it's, it's, like, it's always interesting you guys bring those things as well. You know, it is an ecosystem at the end of the day, and um, there is opportunity for service providers to expose new network, not new network capabilities, but capabilities in a new way to drive new business models, new business opportunities, monetization of these services, particularly where um, critical service is, is, is an important part of an enterprise-based business. This is where there's a lot of new business opportunities here for, for operators. And if you, you need to be able to do that in a uniform way, you need to be able to automate it and manage it effectively. And, and that's where you know, a consistent series of APIs can be very, very powerful. Interesting. interesting. Well, well, Joanne, we always appreciate you guys stopping by and kind of give us an update of what's happening there. Again, the work with MEF should be uh, pretty interesting, and we'll look forward to both the show coming up and also in July uh, when the first uh, fruits of the labors come, come out on that as well, too. But uh, like, again, we always appreciate the time and insights, and hopefully we can uh, touch base again soon. NFV SDN Reality Check with Dan Meyer is a production of RCR TV. To suggest show topics or to reach Dan, you can find him on email dmeyer at rcrwireless.com and on Twitter at Meyer underscore Dan. For more Dan, news on NFVSDN and everything wireless, find your way over to rcrwireless.com.